will switch to some, something quite different in terms of uh, <coughs> uh, structures. One of those structures that you will see is indeed the layered uh, structure that appears that we are seeing biological uh, materials. So, uh, so this is the type, the title, and I, I have divided this into three uh, parts. I'll compare human engineers versus natural engineer, uh, and, and list some stumbling issues for the human engineer. We'll talk about strength and toughness, and the recruiting nature as prepared social motives. I look at composites that are bio-inspired uh, synthetic. So some of the uh, really difficult things that uh, human engineers have to face when uh, looking at nature, uh, uh, nature, natural structures, are the following. One is of course the self-assembling capabilities of nature that we don't really have from the narrow level to the macroscopic level. But the pervasive presence of hierarchy in, in all these structures, this is something that is really almost impossible to reproduce uh, uh, as engineers. The capability of self-healing or self-repair, of course. The morphing or adaptation to changing mechanical environment, which is also, you know, at the very basic stage in engineering structures, uh, almost nowhere. Uh, the presence of interfaces that are clever interfaces of, of various kinds. And the issue of strength and toughness, which I think is probably the, the easiest uh, issue to deal with, and I, I would like to focus on that first. And regarding hierarchy, there is a sentence that I like very much by, by Julian Vinson, who says that hierarchy arises mainly because a biological organism is not made like uh, engineering uh, uh, organisms or engineering structures. It becomes. It's changing all the time. It's, that's how hierarchy arises. And we are very far from that in terms of so, strength and toughness, uh, it goes like this. Most biological studios are high complex composites. They have superior toughness and they have superior strength. This is something which is amazing because, in, 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 by contrast, uh, we engineers or engineering materials are either this or that, but they are almost never both simultaneously. Uh, and it, 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 it's changing slowly, but we are still very far from what nature has been able to uh, create. And as, as, you know, as you can see from these two and many other articles, this is a hot topic. This is something that uh, you know, people are looking at for the last few years. Uh, this is nothing by François Bartegla, for example, in McGill. McGill and, and he said that how to raise soft material is strong and greater reinforcement to achieve effective combinations of stiffness, strength, and toughness, and usually stiffness and strength go together, is an ongoing and fascinating question in engineering. And biological material science. And Richie, Rob Richie is another one. He says about the same. These are two examples of a very strong and very tough materials. So one is bone at the left, and the other one is nacre, uh, which is 99% ceramic material. And it's both strong and tough. And of course, toughness, as you know, is a real problem for ceramic materials. And here you go, you have very, very tough materials. So there are two things to talk about. One is the mechanisms that you see in nature, and the other one is the motifs that you see in nature. As a mechanism, uh, we generate toughness. As a mechanism, uh, the composites that you find in nature are all, often, very often something that is the reverse, the opposite of what we uh, usually uh, create. We usually create polymer-based composite materials that is from 50% uh, organic material and 50% approximately uh, ceramic or brittle material. Nature doesn't do that. Nature takes 99% ceramic material, and the, the rest is a very tiny amount of organic, proteinic material, usually. And that is not something that a human engineer would, would even consider if you want to create a structure. But that's exactly what nature is doing. So that's one. And, and this leads usually, when we talk about layers, this leads usually to nanometer size organic interfaces between micrometer size with the break that I can make. Organic bridges at the nano level, and there are all kinds of organic bridges. I will skip this. Smart bridging or sacrificial bonds is another mechanism of uh, generate toughness. I won't talk about this. Bridging sutures, which I won't talk about, maybe just mention it. Uh, pull out of platelets during crack growth generates a lot of toughness, and there are other things that uh, can be considered as mechanisms to generate toughness. Motifs, there are 
I, I think there are three types of motifs that you find, basic types of motifs that you find in nature uh, that generate roughness. The first one is to the creation of unidirectional fibrous composites in nature. It's almost all over. There are many, many of those. Uh, I'll give you some examples. The second one is a staggered kind of composite materials, and I will give you some examples too. And of course, the layered composites, which we will talk about very quickly. Nature also does something else. It takes the, these two, these three uh, basic principles and hybridizes them and mix them together. And, and I will give you an example. So the first one is unidirectional fibrous composites. You know them as, as much as I do, and so I, I'm going to go through this very, very quickly. Tantalum is a typical example. There are many other examples that will be on the next slide. Uh, it's a strong, tough, and hierarchical hybrid composites, as you can see. Yes, it starts at the, at, the, at the molecule level, molecular level basically, and it goes up all the way to the full tandem unit. And the number of the, the, the defect, the spectrum of defects is actually uh, almost non existent here and very existent here, which means at every level you slightly weaken the, uh, the fibers, the, the fiber. Okay? And so you have a very strong fiber, slightly weaker, slightly weaker, etc. And so here is the strongest part, and here is the weakest part, and so you have a weak composite at many layers, at many scales. It's a hierarchical material. Okay. So that's one. Wool is exactly the same principle at many, many levels, so I'm skipping this. Keratin again is the same. Ketene is the same, where you know, the, uh, the same uh, arrangement uh, uh, arises. The second part is staggered composite. Staggering is something very interesting uh, that you find a lot in nature. Nacre is one example of staggering. It's a brick and mortar thing, uh, uh, arrangement, basically. Enamel, which is the hard part of your poo, or your teeth. Your teeth, not your teeth, of course. <laughs> uh, where uh, you have uh, endoxyapatite platelets inside uh, codeine material, uh, collagen, and uh, mineralized collagen fibrin. Which, is, uh, which can be lowly mineralized or highly mineralized depending on the, the age uh, of uh, the person. This is the same thing, different view. And uh, another example, the third part is the layered composite materials, layering, which occurs, for example, in bone. The bone is made of lavalade, osteomic bone, which is part of the bone, uh, as, as uh, layers that are about five micron thickness, and every layer actually has an array of uh, hydroxyapatite platelets that goes in a different direction. And so it's a rotated plywood kind of uh, arrangement, which is very complicated, very, very interesting. Artery is another layered material which is extremely complicated. Uh, basically it's divided into intima, media, and ventita. There are many, uh, many intermediate layers as well. Cartilage is even more complicated, it's not symmetric, not in thickness, not in direction of the uh, fibers, and so on. So that's another example. And hybridization of those three motifs arises, for example, in bone. Because in bone you have the hydroxyapatite uh, uh, platelets, which are the staggered uh, arrangement. Uh, and then you have the, uh, the layered arrangement, and they form fibers. So you have a mix of the three types of uh, motifs here. Same for bamboo. And then it goes even more complicated. You have this, uh, this uh, motif that occurs in stomatopause. Stomatopause is a shrimp, basically. The mantis shrimp. But it, it also appears in, in, it appears also in crabs and other things and so forth. And so it's a rotated plywood structure, again. A layered rotated plywood structure, which is also called a bouligon structure. And this is how you see it. All right, so now the last part of this uh, uh, lecture, short lecture, is bio and spice synthetic hybrid composites. I'll give you uh, four examples very quickly from our current work and recent work. The first one is this one. This is a turtle or a tortoise, depending if it's in water or on ground. And the shell, this shell here, is a bony organ, it's a layered structure, uh, and, and it's called the carapace on the top and the ventral, and the plastron and the ventral part. And there is a thin uh, keratin layer 
this is a computer tomography view of this carapace. And you see it's a laminate. There is a cortex, a dorsal cortex, a cancerous uh, region, and a ventral cortex. And I will describe it very quickly on the next slide. It's a sandwich, basically. And it's designed exactly like, you know, a surf, 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 a surf. And uh, it, it, the, the design is for weight reduction, buoyancy, and energy absorption of impact. This is the layer of structure as we see it in the electronic uh, microscope eventually. The dorsal cortex is a randomly oriented composite material, fibrous composite. But on top of that, there is a keratin uh, laminate, as you see here, which are called keratin skews. Uh, the youngest modulus has been measured by, we have measured by uh, laminatization. Then there is the cancer present to interior. And then the very interesting part is this the, the ventral cortex. It's actually a 0 90 composite materials. Uh, I may have an idea why this is 0 90 and not anything else, but, but this is another issue. Uh, there is then the, this keratin at the top, and under impact, we've done impact experiments, and under impact, the keratin almost never breaks. And so it's really a life saving kind of mechanism because then the bone which has been broken. Uh, uh, upon impact is going to repair itself simply because the keratin has kept everything together still. So that's a very interesting concept. Keratin is here. This is a, a so called Ashby plot, okay, which is the toughness versus the modulus. And uh, keratin is there. Look, keratin is really at the top. It's very high toughness and relatively high modulus of strength, even. And it's even above bone, the bone antler, which is the strongest type of bone there is in culture. So it's Keratin is really an amazing material. We have done, this is a bio-inspired lecture, so we have done some, uh, uh, prepared some specimens of all kinds of uh, polymers with alumina layers. And uh, PVA, PVB, which is polyvinyl which is uh, the material that you have in your window uh, on, in the cars, and that keeps the glass together, basically, of an impact. And we have also uh, used alumina and we have also glass. And these are the results, which I'm, I'm you know, just mentioning them, uh, which are quite good actually. But if you uh, pay attention, the total carapace is still there. It's still better than whatever we have been able to uh, prepare uh, so far. A second example, quickly, is the speakers of marine sponge. The speakers are these. They, they, when you, the sponge is at the bottom of the ocean and it's stuck with these anchors, which are the silica speakers. Why is this interesting? Because a spicule is, a, is, an, uh, is an array of silica layers, hundreds of them, which are separated by a very thin proteinic material, uh, silica thein, it's a, one, one type of protein, and that makes the, the whole difference. For example, this line here, this curve, this is a stress strain curve of silica rod, which is glass, homogeneous glass. This is a stress strain curve. And this is almost the same material except for this one or two percent silica thing, the protein material, polymer, if you wish, which is in between. And look at the difference in, in, in stiffness, in strength, and of course in, uh, in toughness. It's amazing. Uh, this, this, this is a huge crack stopper uh, material, and uh, this we have to learn something. So we did something about it. Again, this is what I just told you. Just one more thing is that there is bridging in between those layers once the crack propagates. So that's another toughness, toughen, uh, toughening uh, uh, mechanism. So we did some uh, simulations and uh, we used alumina and not silica because it's simply because alumina is cheaper than uh, silica. And uh, we used two types of polymers, PMMA, which is a relatively brittle material, polymer and PVA, which is uh, softer and tougher, polyvinyl alcohol. And you see, the, uh, this was uh, coated with uh, half a percent of uh, those, uh, the, the alumina was coated with half a percent of hydrogen format. And, uh, and the results are in this paper here, but uh, we are here. And here means what? This is the fractured toughness K1C to measure using three point bend or four point bend uh, testing. And this is the alumina content, which means we are almost 100% alumina material. And uh, the PVA laminates more than the PMMA laminates. It's, it's better. The PVA laminate is here. And all the other points don't 
don't relate to this, uh, this blue point because these are metals, so it's not really comparable. But all the other materials in the, in the literature are uh, not performing as well as, as this one, or they have a lower uh, value of uh, the ceramic content. We did some observation of cell, I'm going to skip this to try to explain what we see and so on. And again, these are the technical ceramics. Uh, this is again a nice big plot. Fractured toughness versus the year strength. Technical ceramics are here. Our material is here. This is a logarithmic axis. And so uh, we are really one order of magnitude better with this layered ceramic polymer material compared to the current technical ceramics. So that's a good result. You can also create interfacial bridging between the layers. This is this has inspired us to put carbon nanotubes actually at the interfaces to generate this kind of thing. And we have published this just last month. Uh, and uh, and uh, the, uh, I'm skipping you the, uh, the preparation because I don't have time. But the preliminary data, just to give you an idea, the strength of four layer uh, uh, laminate like this is 124. And the uh, four layer N multi wall carbon nanotubes is 186. That's Increase, but the work of fracture is doubled almost. Okay, so the presence of carbon nanotubes uh, makes a big difference. The third example is, is, is morphing laminates based on layer plant composite tissues. So, this is a tree at the bottom of uh, my building, uh, the Faculty of Chemistry and Advancement. And this is the box that we have to put it open. I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, This is how it opens once it releases the seeds. So you all know this. And, uh, and so what we wanted to do is to the first is to understand why it opens like this and how it works, and then try to reproduce it uh, by inspiration. And so this is, this is another one which opens even nicer. But first of all, we went to two minutes. So first of all, we, we went to the, we did these three. And we went to the electron microscope. It's a lot of work, a year, a full year of work uh, of analyzing this. It's very difficult to uh, find out exactly the, the structure of this because uh, cellulose is, is difficult. But basically, these are these are uh, the patterns that we have observed. It's a, they are all the plants are difficult. They are all complex layer cellulose-based composites made of nanoscale fibers arranged in microscale patterns. Uh, more in, in this paper that I. Uh, and then we do two types of simulations, numerical simulations, which was fine, and then also a laboratory simulation, we created, recreated what we saw uh, in, in nature using uh, polyacrylonic as a fiber and PVA as a matrix. And, uh, and this is what we see, this is just an illustration of what we recreated. And just to demonstrate that what we did based on the observations, what we did was okay. See, it opens exactly the same way. So I'm going to continue to understand. The last example is something that we do currently in, co in, in cooperation with the, the Chinese Academy of Science. They create, uh, the last example is, is based on the tandem. And uh, we work with CNTFs, carbon nanotube fibers. And the carbon nanotube fibers is made of uh, carbon nanotubes, and then there are millions of carbon nanotubes, it's a four scale uh, uh, material. And they are made of millions of carbon nanotubes, and this scale here is about 20 micron diameter. And uh, why we do this, this is just current work actually, we just submitted this. We do this because we can control the penetration of the polymer outside, uh, we can create this, we can uh, control this uh, by a coating. So with, with such a certain type of coating, the polymer doesn't penetrate, with another type of coating, the polymer does penetrate. And so that's a new design parameter for and uh, see, this is with coating of ethylene glycol. There's perfect penetration, like in nature, basically. And this is with this uh, HNO3, no penetration whatsoever, and, uh, and measure the adhesion. That's why I'm asking all the time how do you measure adhesion. So uh, adhesion you can measure by pull out, you can measure by fragmentation. And I think I'm going to show this fragmentation. This is my last slide almost. Uh, because of this simulation that you showed, actually. So you see how it looks like in reality now. This is a fiber in a, in a, in a, in a 
matrix. And so this is a fragmentation. That this is real, real life a fragmentation of one of those fibers. And then you count uh, the breaks, you measure the fragment length, and so on. So it's random, as you can see. Okay. So where do we stand? Uh, this is the CNT of one type, this is the CNT of the other type. This is just the critical analysis. And how does this compare to tendon? Well, tendon is here. Again, it's a composite strength versus composite toughness. And it's a logarithmic scale. So we have done well in this case. All right, so this is you know, what we do. We start with observation of natural structures. We go to synthetic hybrids by nano reinforcement, by generation fiber structure, by multi layer structure, and then styloid structure. So this is the bio inspired future according to NASA. It looks like a bird, mm -hmm. and it should be bio inspiration. To me, it looks like a bird. And a silent bird, actually, for the people inside because the rotors are on top. Anyway, thank you very much for your attention. This is support I get, I get, and uh, my students and these artists. Thank you very much.